Hey everyone, and welcome to a video where I show how to make a game, but I do it in just one episode. Today, I will be making a snake game where you play as a snake. Wow. In this game, you can't touch the tail or the edge, and you try to get apples, which are like the score. And the more apples you eat, the more long your snake gets. Don't forget to check out the link in the description to play this game if you want to be a snake and eat apples because apples are cool and snake, and you can grab the art while you're there if you want to use my art. And also, subscribe and like. Okay, so I I have three sprites. One is called player, one is called food, and one is called BG. In the player, I have costume called head, and it is the very front of the snake. Then I have body, which is just the head, but without the eyes. And I forgot to add these pixels right here. In food, I have a costume called apple, and it is a Pixar apple. And then in the BG, I have a bunch of squares. Now it's important to know that for this to all work, if you're making your own art, you need to make all of these consistent. So what I mean by that is is my tile is this size right here, these four things. So I made all of my assets fit inside of there. So you can see that this is perfectly in the center of that. So is the body, the food is perfectly in that. Then the BG, that is perfectly one square. So once I go ahead and size it up, you'll see what I mean. So I'm gonna set these size to all of these to 500. And you can see that if I make the checkerboard go to zero, zero, and then say make the apple go to zero, zero, you can see that it is perfectly in the middle of one of those tiles. So go into the player and add a win green flag click broadcast new message and name this reset. Now when I receive reset, wait zero seconds, go to front, show, point in direction 90, go to zero zero, so it starts right in the middle. Switch costume to head. Now it's kind of hard to see, so let's go ahead and make the background look right. So go into the background and add a win green flag click, go to zero zero, show, and now set the ghost effect to 90% wherever go to back. Now you can see that the tiles are a nice light gray. That is cool. And you can for now go ahead and hide the food so it doesn't pop up right there. Now we need a few new variables. So make a for all sprite variable called snake length. Wow, I spell good. Click OK and set that snake length to zero. Make another for all sprite variable called direction or dir for short and set that to 90, which is to the right. Now add a forever loop, move 40 steps, which is perfectly one tile. The way I figured that out is I just started with like 38 and was like nope that's not as far enough and I went to 39 and now you can see it's kind of centered and then I was like wait if I do one more 40 there it goes it snaps perfect in the middle. Now we want to point in direction dir. We want to duplicate this weight right here and add a 0.2 in the beginning and 0.2 right here. Now you can see that it is moving quite quickly. So when I receive reset forever if else right here he w is pressed which is up then we're going to set direction to zero else if key S is pressed and set direction to negative 180, which is going down. Else if key A is pressed, set direction to negative 90. And then last but not least, just an if key D is pressed, set direction to 90. So now you can see that we can actually use WASD to turn the direction of our snake. Now there is one problem though. You can see that if we are going to the left, we can just press the right key and we can press D and it'll immediately turn around. That's fine when we're small. Let's say we have a tail, we're going to go inside of the tail. So we need to add a check to make sure it's not doing that. For W, we want to press if key W is pressed and not direction equals negative 180. Duplicate this for this one for S and do if not direction equals zero. Now duplicate this and for A if direction not equal to 90 and then for D if direction not equal to negative 90. We can still move around but if you are going left and you want to go right it won't let you. Now that we have that we need a way of making the tail work. We need a list to keep track of the position and the direction. So make a for all sprite list called head X, copy that and click OK. Make another one called head Y, click OK, and another one called head direction. Now in the very beginning here, delete all of all three of those ones. So delete all of head X, head Y, and head direction. Add an insert right here, direction at one of head direction. Duplicate that, insert X position at one of head X. Duplicate that one more time and insert Y position at one of head Y. What that did is if we open up all of our lists, you can see that every time we move, it keeps track of the direction, the X, and the Y position of our player. So when I start as a clone, show, switch costume to body, 
change the snake length by one, make a for the sprite only variable called clone ID, set that clone ID to snake length plus one. Now forever, go to block and go ahead and do a item one of head X and item one of head Y. Now instead of one, we are going to do clone ID and clone ID. Then go ahead and do a point in direction 90 and duplicate all of this and change it to head direction. So that is going to just make it go to the right spot and point in the right direction. Now if we go ahead and test this by moving around and then clicking create clone of myself. You can see every time we click it, one more tail piece spawns in and it will follow around the player. Now let's make the food spawn. Go into the food and add a when I receive start wait zero seconds hide go to zero zero make a formal sprite variable called food amount and set that food amount to zero now create clone of myself wait zero more seconds forever if the food amount is less than one so that means we've eaten all the food repeat pick random one to three create clone of myself so once we eat all the food it's going to make either one two or three more food spawn around the screen now when i receive reset delete this clone and also pull that into to the player that way it clears out all of the clones when we reset tape now back in the food add a when i start as a clone forever then a change size by 10 and instead of that put a divided by and then a minus in the left side now input the size you want it to go to which is 500 minus size and then divided by 5 which is a smoothness so this is just going to make it always go to 500 size now another when i start as a clone and then a set size to zero and now a go to to zero zero for now then a show and a go to back if we change this to like negative 50 you can see that in the very beginning it smoothly pops in now we need to figure out a way to make it spawn randomly but on this grid start with a times and take this times pixel amount that our player moves which if we look here it's 40 pixels so times 40 now put a divided by and do divided by 40 and put that divided by in a round like this the actual x position that you want it to go to so i'm going to do negative 200 to 200 now put that in the x loop right here duplicate that and just change the pick random to negative 150 to 150 you can see that when the clone is created it goes to a random tile on the screen and it's always perfectly in the center of that tile now oh my gosh there was a lot of apples so we probably need to fix that otherwise our clone limit is going to get filled up so all we need to do is change the food amount by one in the when i start as a clone now you can see that it just makes one now we need to make it to where you can actually eat it so forever if we are touching the player wait zero seconds so it waits one frame change the food amount by negative one create clone of player so it makes another tail and then delete this clone now you can see that if we go ahead and eat this apple it deletes itself and we get one longer and then if we go ahead and eat another apple we keep getting longer and longer and it makes more and more apples around the screen right now there's one problem we can go ahead and touch our tail we can go straight through it and we can go into the edge which will mess up our grid as you can see now we're off the grid we want it to instantly reset the game once we touch either the tail or the edge to do this go into the player and add another when i receive reset forever if touching the edge or we are touching we need to detect if we're touching the tail but there's no tail in here so here's how you do it you go into another sprite like food pull out a touching and do touching the player now pull that into the player and now you have a touching player so this is going to detect if it's touching the tail because those touching can actually detect clones as well if we're touching the edge or our tail we are going to stop other scripts in sprite repeat three times set the brightness effect to 90 wait 0.1 seconds clear the graphic effects then wait 0.1 seconds and after that repeat loop broadcast reset okay so let's test this out and hope this works if we go to the edge you can see it flashes three times and then it does not reset it just gets into an infinite loop so the reason that is is when we touch it broadcast reset and then when i receive reset right here it instantly checks if we're touching the edge again and it says yep we're touching the edge so then it gets into a loop so how you can fix this is just add a wait 0.2 seconds before this loop right here now 
you can see that it works. So if we go ahead and touch the edge, it flashes and then it restarts the game and we lose our tail. Okay, so now let's test if we touch our tail, if it also does it. There we go. As you saw, it restarted the game. Now there's actually a challenge because you have to dodge your tail and you can't touch the edge. There's just one thing I want to add, which is score. That way you can see how excellent you are at snake. Make a for all sprite variable called score and double click the score over here, which will make it into this nicer looking one and move it to the middle. Now set the score in the reset to zero, go into the food and change the score by one in this loop right here. Now you can see that every time we eat a apple, we get one score in our counter. And if we either touch our tail or the edge, you can see it flashes and then it sets the score to zero. Now there's a lot of customization you can do here. For instance, you can change the speed right here, this wait time, whatever you set this to is how fast it goes. So instead of 0.2, if you do one, you can see that it moves every one second and it's super duper slow. You can also change the amount of food that can be on screen. So maybe instead of pick random one to three, you can do like one to 10. So now every time you eat something, as you can see, it has a chance to make more clones. All right. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode or it helped you out, then make sure to drop a like and consider subscribing. But anyway, this has been Owen and I am out. Thank you.